Welcome to this small tutorial on how to use the 6 updater. First thing you're gonna do is go to your Internet Explorer and browse to the website to actually download the program. The link is down in the description. It's on deathheaven.net and uh, once you've reached that site you click on projects on the top left corner and then for ease of use I'm gonna use the search feature inside of the Internet Explorer and look for six updater and then GUI because there's two versions there's one which has a graphical interface this one we're gonna use and an older version which doesn't have a graphical user interface uh, or rather opens a web page for you so you're gonna click on files on this website and then there's exactly one file you're gonna want to download which is the exe the installer program for the six updater so that can take up, uh, well, depending on how fast the internet is, should go fairly quickly. You run the program and uh, you can select the language. It's gonna show you the installer and then uh, it's gonna welcome you. You can select if you want some shortcuts, the program destination, and the name in your start menu. After you accepted all that, it's gonna install. And this program needs Net Framework 4.0 at least. And I've put a link for that in the description of this video too. Otherwise, if you click on the shortcut on your desktop, it will bring you an error message and won't open the program. But once you do, uh, it shows you this update check because the program will keep itself updated. And you don't have to worry about that at all. You just uh, open it and it will run the updater for you automatically. And then once it's finished, it will start the application for you. You can also start the program without the updater in your start menu, but you uh, shouldn't need to because it's fairly quickly. So I'm going to maximize this and in the lower uh, side of the program you can see it's running some updates and there's a progress bar. Basically it's initializing the program and synchronizing to server records and getting games by server info. So you have everything at your fingertips once it's well finished with that and you can start using the program. And this is how it looks by default. You got uh, the five grey tabs in the middle, the mods, then there is a uh, servers tab, which shows you all the servers, and there's the presets tab, which shows you all the three pre presets that come by default, dynamic, and then there's profiles, you don't need to worry about those, and mirrors, which has all the different mirrors the program is going to get the updates or mod files from. On the left hand you see this run updater button and it shows you all the available actions to you. We're gonna go back to that in a bit but first of all um, what you should do is uh, you can see you can sync servers which it already did and game records so you get update, updated server information. You can hit this small uh, button you can see you can run different actions and there's the RPT which is kind of a debugging feature. If something goes wrong this will bring you to the location of your log files. But first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna click on save and then run the speed test. And what that is gonna do for you is to bring all your mirrors that are available to you in order so that you always download from the fastest source. And this can take a little bit because it's gonna ping all the different servers, run a small speed test. But once it's finished uh, you're gonna be good to go and uh, just while this is added, I'm gonna browse to my game folder so you can see that this is actually a vanilla game folder. I didn't do anything, there is no mod files inside of this right now. And uh, you can see uh, it's ARMA2 and OA in the same folder. So I got a combined operations installation, which I'd recommend if you've got both games, install them into the same folder because most servers use content from, even though if they are running Tarkistan, they will use content from, for example, armored 2 like, uh, well, armored vehicles or units in general just from armored 2. So if you get the chance, install both programs into the same folder. will, uh, yeah, save you from a lot of trouble for certain servers. So this is still running the update, you can see on the progress bar below. And it's gonna... Yeah, finished now. Yeah, I can see um, the priority tab has no members in it. I followed it uh, to an ascending order. Number zero is one with the highest priority. And now and you can see the presets above. We have these three default presets. We're not going to change those. And there's profile, 
which basically has different game profiles, so OA any will auto detect this just combined operations. Standalone, if you don't have armor 2, then there's armor 2 any and armor 2 standalone, which are basically kind of the same. And depending on the setting, um, it will download mods appropriately. So and then there's a server list where you can select a server. And uh, if you uh, you can see if I click on a server now, like a uh, test, it will update on the left the mod folder. Uh, it just added one mod, didn't change much. So uh, I'm gonna show you if I select a different server like Six Sense. It has a whole lot of different uh, mods and additions changed on the left. But uh, for this example, I'm not gonna download all these mods. So I'm gonna reselect the Ace Test server real quick and. Uh, to just download some mods because otherwise it's gonna take quite some time. So hitting Ace Test and uh, it's gonna update on the left. You see uh, the black mods, by the way, it won't download because by my profile it's uh, detected that I have combined operations installation and I don't need the A2 or OA mods. And by the way, in this test uh, server, you can uh, directly input the password of the server like I just did and uh, it will automatically use the password once you connect if you set this checkbox here. Um, okay, it's not gonna work for me right now, it's probably a bug. Uh, yeah, there's a lot of other information, we're not gonna go into that, it's not really important for you. So just click on the server you wanna use, hit on use selected on the lower left, and you can tick the beta checkbox because uh, some servers use the beta patch, and you see it actually added the expansion beta to the preset on the left, which is uh, shown in green, because I already have that mod installed. And then you use the actual installer update, and you can see on the lower corner it's gonna start updating, and your game folder's actually gonna show the progress for you. So it's showing uh, the at CBA folder, at ASX, and basically the folder is just uh, processing. And inside of this you see this .rsync folder, which is basically what it downloads, so every file in there it's gonna be packed in the GZ format, so it doesn't download huge files, it compresses them automatically. And the actual folders are in this add-ons folder, and these are the ones that the game is gonna load once you start the game. And uh, yeah, well, while this is uh, downloading the mods, let's just lean back and uh, yeah. You might have noticed there's different colors I already talked about, this is blue, black and green right now. And if I abort the process on the lower left corner, one of them changes, changes to yellow, which means that it knows it has the folder but it's not up to date or it cannot be sure or tell you what version the mod folder is in. And um, if I just click install or update again, it will continue where it left off so you can abort the uh, process at any time you want and just continue later. It won't break anything for you and uh, you can do this one mod at a time if you don't have the bandwidth to do it in one sit-in or if you just have to close the application because you want to do something else. You can just go ahead and do that. It won't break anything for you, it will just continue where it left off the next time you start. Okay, cool. So, some minutes later it finished. I didn't want to bore you with the process, so just skip ahead in time. You see everything is green now and if I open my Armor 2 folder which I still have open in the taskbar, then you can actually see that all the different new folders have been created and all the mods have been downloaded. And um, if I open the CBA folder and delete the rsync folder just to show you all the different kinds of colors you can get, if I then open up the 6 update again and, well, basically it's gonna do an auto update right now because it's fetching server information, because it's probably set to 10 minutes or something for the auto update, but once it's finished it's gonna show on the left that the CBA mod is actually in red now. And uh, if I try, uh, yeah, I'm gonna select the server again, but if I try and run the update again, even though all the mods are there, technically also the CBA mod is installed and should be working if I start the game, it uh, should give me an error message because it cannot update the mod. And if I scroll up in this log, you can see that at CBA it says warning, folder already exists, but uh, blah 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 isn't compatible, not installing, and if I want to fix that I should delete the mod folder or convert it. And in the run update there's this action that says convert to 6 updated. And what this does, you can see it's uh, checking the files again, it's turning yellow on the mods, it's recreated that .rsync subfolder, 
And if I now click on Installer Update, it shouldn't do much. It's just checking again that it is up to date, comparing the async files, and it's back to green, and then everything is ready to go. So, this is basically what you would do. You can now click Join Server, and it will automatically load the mods for you, connect to the server, and if you set a password, it would use that too. You wouldn't have to worry about that. That's basically how the updater works in general.